Dan Schuler. I'm president of Bradford Gearworks. Uh, first of all, welcome to the facility here. Um, with 275,000 square feet of manufacturing space, dedicated pretty much to the energy industry for both our wind and oil and gas customers, and, and also including mining. We are a niche manufacturer of large gears, um, high precision gears for the wind turbine industry, for oil, oil and gas pumps, mining industry. Uh, again, we specialize in large, customized gears. We do some precision, we do some uh, precision work of high volume, but our main shop is built on uh, high mix, low volume type of work. Uh, we have a number of challenges. Uh, our first challenge is we ramped up for the uh, wind turbine industry, which was booming in the 2007 and 2008 time frame. And with the uh, crunch event, with the downturn of energy costs and prices, uh, wind has kind of slowed down and we built up our capacity. So we're now sitting in a position of over capacity. And we have to find ways to go out and find other customers and add, add value to our products even more than what we have in the past so that we can we can uh, gain some more market share and gain some new customers to help fill our factories. What we have to do is we have to continue to streamline our processes in order to take cost out, but more importantly, what can we do to differentiate ourselves from other, other gear manufacturers out there so that we're adding, adding value and bringing something to the table that our competition can't. I think Bradford Gearworks is a, is a proven example of how um, this is the type of manufacturing that we're going to have here in the United States. Niche manufacturing of, of large customized type products, I would say manufacturing is definitely not dead in the United States. We just have to, we have to reposition ourselves to make sure that we're making the right things that continue to add value to our customers that are difficult, uh, especially on high volume or high mix, low volume type of work that our customers really need. And they're the type of products that really are, are hard to um, manufacture and ship in from offshore. I, I've worked with IMAC for the last about the last six years and uh, mainly doing lean training, but we're, I'm focusing IMAC on going forward in the future is in order for us to hit our customers' lead times, which are very demanding, we have to not only get better in the factory as far as throughput, but we have to get better in our front end processes, including our office processes. From, the, from how we take an order all the way through cash, we have to really concentrate on our front end processes to make sure that our sales group is processing the order as quickly as possible, our engineering is releasing the order as quickly as possible, and that we're ordering material and stocking material so we can get that order to the shop floor to give them a shot at delivering to our customers' requirements. IMAC, we got an event starting the first week of December, but IMAC's gonna be focused on our industrial process and on the front end in order to help streamline our process and get that shop, get that uh, order to the shop floor quicker. Hey, Nick. Brad Albrecht, uh, Vice President of Finance and Funding Converting. We're located in Columbia, Illinois, which is just across the river from St. Louis. Uh, we take adhesive foams and tapes and we slit it, die cut it into end user specs. Um, we really got our start uh, in taking material that was maybe an inch that the customer was buying and they really only need three quarters, so then we started slitting it down to three quarters, saving them some material cost, and then it went into die cutting and kind of just expanded from there. What they, where they'll see it is, uh, they buy a new car, uh, a lot of the masking tape applications for painting, okay. we do a lot of work with that. Uh, if you go to a grocery store, big refrigeration units, uh, we do have a lot of tape and foam uh, inside those units. Uh, your computer has foam in it uh, to shield it, and we do a lot of work with the electronics industry. Electronics, uh, we really hit, even we even go into the oil and gas industries, uh, we hit a lot of different, just about aeronaut, uh, aeronautics, okay. uh, we, hit, we hit just about everything, transportation, uh, we hit a lot of different, different uh, industries. Two years ago, we, we had a uh, major drop in sales in, in back orders. What we had to do was reduce our staff 10% across the board. Everybody took a 10% pay cut. And uh, 
uh, that actually lasted for 18 months, and it was not until about six six months ago that we were able to see the sales go up, our back orders go up, so we were able to take everybody back up to 100% of their earnings uh, pre pre recession. We also had to let off let go about four, four to five percent of our of our staff during that time period, uh, and we uh, have just started rehiring again. Really, it's kind of a do, we're kind of caught in the middle too. You, you mentioned the customers are asking in this, but we're also seeing it from our supply side. Our suppliers have shut down lines, and they're not willing to bring the lines back up until the sales are, are generating enough to to enable them to uh, bring those lines back up. So yes, we're seeing the customers say we need this material yesterday, and our suppliers are saying, well, you're not going to get it till tomorrow. So we're really stuck in the middle. So what we had to do is one, we've had to inventory a little bit more. Um, we've also had to extend out our terms a little bit more from our customers to uh, enable some blanket order of sales so that the sales that we're getting aren't just for a month at a time. We've been able to extend out orders six months, and, but we've also had to extend out the terms. So between inventory more and extended terms has really helped our sales base. Five years ago, I would have agreed with them to a, to a large, large part. But I think now what we're seeing is, you know, transportation costs are going back up. Uh, you know, China's seeing a big union movement. We're actually seeing people bringing stuff back into the states that they had outsourced to China, to Mexico. Um, and so, really, I think it's just the opposite right now. In the last six, eight months, we've actually had people come to us and say, "Hey, we were we were manufacturing." outside, but between the cost to get it here, the cost to get it over there, have it manufactured, the cost to get it back, there's, there's not a big enough difference now. We're going we're gonna to start manufacturing here in the States again, so it's actually turned around. Well, I tell you, the biggest project we had with IMAC was our software project where we had to bring in a new software ERP system for our entire plant. Uh, it was a project that took over two years to implement. Uh, IMEC was with us the whole way. They helped us find the proper software, which took six to eight months alone. They walked us through step by step. It was really helpful in that we also were able to team up with IMEC uh, for training purposes. We got twice the amount of training that we would have ordinarily been able to afford, so it really helped us out. They've also helped us uh, with our plan. We were looking at maybe having to expand. They came in, took a snapshot of our plant, helped us uh, go into like a lean mode for our plant, to able, which enabled us to keep our, our plant uh, where we keep our company where we're at right now. Uh, and, it, and it helped us from having to build another facility, a $4 million Save facility. Save those investment costs. Yes, exactly. My name is Lon Kurtz. Um, I'm president and COO of Eclipse Incorporated. It's a medium-sized family-owned company in Rockford, Illinois. And we manufacture industrial heating equipment for all the industrial processes around the world. Our product is really used to help make everything else. And so whether it's the heat treating the gears here at the Bradford Gear Company, or uh, melting glass, uh, cooking the food for Keebler Kraft or helping to bake the Payton cars for Toyota, GM, and Ford. Uh, where we get into uh, helping consumer type products is in the food industry, uh, sometimes in the finishing where they're applying paint to basketball hoops, uh, cars, bicycles, etc. What we provide is safe, reliable, efficient, and clean heat industrial process, hopefully elevating the quality of your process through the application of that heat. One of the keys to us doing a good job for our customers is uh, having strong application engineering in terms of adapting the heat to their process. Uh, that's not a skill that you develop or hire off the street. So we need to invest in people for the long term. 
also when we uh, fabricate and manufacture our product, we use a, a very high skilled labor force, uh, high standards of welding and fabricating, uh, electrical wiring and, and uh, plumbing to uh, fabricate our product. And so those skill sets are becoming harder and harder to find and develop. A lot of our equipment is tied to a large capital project, and so project management and project engineering is a key attribute. So that very timely delivery, in sync with the uh, with the build out of a manufacturing process, and then behind that, our equipment is expected to run and operate on a day in day out basis. In the glass industry, uh, the expectation for our equipment is to operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 365 days a year for 15 years. And the reason is easy. If you stand next to a glass furnace, you're in proximity to 3,000 degree molten glass. Nobody wants to work on it, but they also want it safe. So what we do is try to deliver that um, in a very exacting process. Uh, I would say that they haven't walked around the street very much. The heartbeat of America is small and medium-sized manufacturers, and especially the ones that can adapt and grow to new trends. One of the fascinating new trends for us to see is uh, in the wind turbine area. Now, we didn't think wind turbines were going to be pretty quick, but it turns out that the gearhead at the top of one of those turbines currently can only last one year. It's such an extreme environment for it. So heat treaters around the state of Illinois and really around the country have had to adapt their process. And that's been actually growth for them during the economic recession. I've, I'm a strong proponent of IMEC. Uh, we received the benefit of IMEC through our relationship with Caterpillar and John Deere in helping us transform our company and make it much, much stronger. And really weather this last storm without the uh, without the severity of, of uh, turmoil that we had in previous economic storms. It's allowed us to be a lot more flexible. So I took that and I wanted to give that back to other people and that experience back. So I like the opportunity to take the benefits that IMEC and their consultants and their services can provide to small and medium manufacturers, to every manufacturer I can to help make them stronger.